blessing. May we use it in thy name. May we strengthen the congregation. May we pay our bills. May we give to those who are in need to give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. I want to shout. It's time for the shouting announcements. Give a hand, y'all. The shouting announcement. Woo, come on up to the mic and shout for me. Listen to you now. <laughs> hey, I see you a shouter too. <laughs> so I ain't by myself. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. My God, my God, my God. The choir said, I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. There ain't no rock gonna cry out for me. Hey, I got a voice and I can cry out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as I was going through the week, um, it was dropped in my spirit. I said, whether I breathe or I bleed, God is gonna get the glory. <laughs> God get the glory in it all. My God, my God. Y'all, I stand to bring forth your announcement. <laughs> These are our announcements. We will be blessing five needed families with food baskets for Christmas. Please start bringing your non-perishable food items before December the 18th. Thanking you in advance for your generous donation. Yep. Uh, these are our weekly announcements. Our Sunday school is at 9.30 a.m. Our praise and worship is at 11 a.m. Our prayer line is every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Our pure word Bible study is every Tuesday at 7 p.m., which is canceled for this week. And our pastor support meet every second Sunday after service. Daughters of Faith Bible study is every third Tuesday at 6 p.m. and our new membership class is every third Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. and our choir rehearsal is every Saturday at 2 p.m. Here at Center Ridge, our motto is reaching the world, preaching to the unsaved, and we're teaching the saved to serve. Amen. These are your announcements. But Naja has, what's up with Pastor Maxwell? <laughs> Bible book is Ephesians. The Bible verse is 5, 15 through 21, and the subject is how are you living? We have to deny ourselves. We need to worry about if God hears it. We are the light. We need to be a reflection of the sun. God can't reside in the filthy house. We have to start living a higher standard of Christ. Give thanks for everything. This life is about serving him.
men of the world get you ready for the apostolic Center Ridge Baptist Church. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So y'all know I, I don't know everybody yet, but we want to acknowledge any visitors that may be here enjoying our worship and fellowship today. So if you would mind raising your hand or standing up or letting us know if there's anyone here. If not, we're all amongst family, right? Amen. So um, we want you to worship today. Not just in your feelings and emotions, but in your heart and in your mind. Yeah. Put yeah. it all in his hand yeah. today. Now, I, I will pick, put a little plug in here before we do our fellowship time. Now, uh, January, remember, in January we start our relationship stuff. So I expect every one of you, young and old, at least try to invite five to ten people apiece. Fill the class up as much as you can. Do as much as you can, whatever God puts on your heart to do, because we want a great relationship class, okay? Amen. All right, but at this time, let's all stand and uh, shake somebody's. Okay. Oh, do the promo. Let us stand. <laughs> See? Shake someone's hand today. All these wonderful little children that are here today. Y'all go on out and shake each other's hand and fellowship a little bit with each other today, okay? Let your brother and your sister know how much you care about them. You love them and you miss them.
Y'all ready for the best choir in the nation again? <laughs> give them, give them, give them applause, y'all. Come on, get them up here.
call on that name, Jesus. You know demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Not at the name of Muhammad. Not at the name of Confucius. Not at the name of Buddha. But at the name of Jesus. Yeshua, if you want to call him. It's healing in that name. It's power in that name. Something about the name of Jesus. The old folks say like that, the more I call him, the better I start feeling. It's something about the name of Jesus. Want to do something to you? When I call him, I can call him in the midnight hour. I can call him late at night. When I call him, something happened. At the name of Jesus. Sometimes you got to call them. Oh, something about the name of Jesus. When you call them. My God, my God. You might say, Pastor, I never had the call on them. But keep living. I was sharing with you. Harvey and Frank the other day. I told him I was out working and wouldn't go say nothing to my wife or nothing. I said, Lord, nobody would believe what I'm saying. I'm out and just in the spirit, it was on the Lord's day. You know, in normal, we take stuff for granted. You know, I'm looking at the railroad track and no arms are down. No sound of a train. And here I come in my little Jeep, taking my time. And soon as I crossed the track, there was a train about 30 feet. And boy, I just, I called on the name of Jesus. And you know, it, it, it was like the train was going slow, but when I got across, my heart stopped palpitating. I looked and that train, that train was moving probably 60, 70, I don't know. But I said, Lord, with nobody but you. And I said, Lord, thank you that I didn't die on the railroad track. And so, sin, I know what you're saying because son, your work ain't done yet. And it's something about the name of Jesus. See, I know his power in that name. I know his healing in that name, Jesus. You can sit there like he ain't done nothing for you, but I'm grateful. Now I know what mama say when she say, boy, thank God for the seen and the unseen. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. I said, Lord, I'll serve you till my dying day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. My God. Mm. See, I didn't praise him for what happened. I praise him for what didn't happen. So a lot of time we praise him for what happened, but I praise him for what didn't happen. Lord, I thank you. My God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. 
touch today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He deserves our praise, saints. He deserves all of them. We just adore him. And give the choir a hand, amen. Thank the choir. Amen. Amen. Uh, most of us here in you know, if you're coming up in the 70s, if you're a 70 baby, and you had parents like mine, you ever remember playing, and, and mama would say it's time to eat? You know, <laughs> she said, it's supper time. And you run there to the table, she said, oh, go wash your hands. And you come set the table and eat. You ever set the table and you was just excited and hippopotamus happy? to only sit at the table and find out that the food she prepared is not what you wanted. Am I by myself? <laughs> and she would have some, maybe some beans with squash in it <laughs> and cornbread. And, you know, and Dad would sit there and eat it and I would see that green slime and stuff. <laughs> and I said, Mama, I can't eat that. She said, oh, you're going to eat it today. I said, Mama, I can't, I can't, I can't eat it, but my daddy there, just, he just tearing it up. She said, well, if you, you got really one choice. Two, rather you either eat it or you be hungry. And there are many days that I went to bed hungry <laughs> because I couldn't, didn't like to eat what she had. Prepare. But she was teaching and said, look, I'm, I mean, this is not Burger King where you can have it your way. You know, it's, it's not Little Caesar where your piece is hot and ready. She said, you have to eat whatever I cooked and prepared for you to eat. Talk to me, somebody. Didn't like to eat greens coming up. They like turnip greens and whatever greens they put them all together. And I said, I don't eat green because I thought you was eating grass. They bring go out there and pluck them greens and cook them and all night, and I didn't like the smell of them. And, and I was married to my wife, and her mom would try to cook some greens. She said, Steve, you want some green? I said, I don't eat greens, mama. She said, you don't eat greens. And I said, no, ma'am, I don't eat greens. She said, well, you probably ain't had them right. And I said, no, I don't eat them. I don't care how you cook them, how you dot them up. I said, I don't eat them. She said, well, just try them. And, and Ella was going at it and uh, nod them all, eating the greens and tanning it up. I said, well, let me try some. Let me. They may look so tasty. And I got a hold of those greens. And my attitude changed. From that day forward, I test some greens up. <laughs> I eat greens by themselves. I don't even have to have no meat, no nut, just by themselves. And my brothers and my sisters, I want, I want to preach just on this subject for a few moments. Since we're on the holiday season, be grateful. That's all I want to talk about for a few minutes is be grateful. Nothing like ungrateful people, but just be grateful. And my brothers and my sisters, and I'm going to read for you Matthew chapter 14, finding where it's recorded when Jesus heard about it. He withdrew from there by a boat to a remote, from, uh, from there by a boat to a remote place to be alone. When the crowd heard this, they followed him on foot from their towns. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd, had compassion on them, and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples approached him and said, This place is desert, deserted, and it is, it's already late. Send the crowd away so that they can go 
into the village and buy food for themselves. They don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. Read that again. They don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You, not, not, not single but plural, telling them, you give them something to eat. But we only have five loaves and two fish here. We don't got much. They said to him, bring them here to me, he said. When he did, he commanded the crowd to sit down on the grass. He took, his five, took their five loaves, the, the two fish, looking up to heaven, blessed them. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and said disciples, and disciples gave to the crowd. Everyone ate and was satisfied. Picked, uh, they picked up 12 baskets full of leftovers, pieces. I just want to talk about be grateful. They want to say be grateful. Now this is the scene, and most of you been in church any time, you already know this is Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000. He feeds 4,000 one time, and then he feeds 5,000. And he was traveling, and Jesus was doing ministry, and he was healing people. He was, he was tired and, and fatigued. Sometimes Jesus just wanted to get alone and to a solitude place, to a solitary confinement, and just rest from the day and the pressure of ministry. Ministry. Is pressure. I don't care if you have have five thousand or five. <laughs> five people can apply pressure. And so Jesus is tired. He's it's just getting the boat, Jesus, and he the Bible said after he have heard about it, he heard about John the Baptist. So it's just getting the boat and let's take a trip, let's get away. But they couldn't get away from Jesus. The Bible says that they followed him. Yeah. And they didn't follow him in a car. They didn't follow him on no uh, motor vehicle or none of that, the Greyhound bus. They followed him on foot. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever Jesus was, they said, we're going. Yeah. But why were they following Jesus? The master's distress. Yeah. They want to say the master's distress. The master of stress, he, he's going away. He want to get away. You ever try to get away from people and they seem to find you? Talk to me. Or, or you ever just got off work and said, today I'm going to go home. I'm going to relax. I'm going to turn off the TV. I am I'm just want to relax and exhale. And your phone ring. <laughs> and just the day that you thought it would be the day of rest. It's when it seems like everyone needs you. I guess I'm talking to myself. I guess I'm. That day that you said that, that, that I'm, I'm going to rest, I'm going to chill, that's the day it seems everybody needs you. And here we see Jesus. And they really didn't want Jesus. They want what Jesus was offering. So there's a difference between wanting Jesus and just wanting what he offers. Saints, there's people that they really don't care nothing about you. They just want what you have to offer. They don't care if you live or die. But as long as you're able to supply their insatiable desires, they're satisfied. And that's how Jesus, Jesus they, they really didn't want him. They wanted what he was able to do. As long as Jesus is able to provide, I will go with you, Jesus. And those people, <laughs> they're not really with you. They're just with what you believe in or what you're doing. 
That's it. They, they really, and so if you, stop, if you stop doing or able to do what you was able to do, they no longer need you. Talk to me, somebody. And, and so, gee, you heard, y'all, I heard this so much in the Christian community. I don't want the folks to use me. You ain't going to use me. Y'all, I mean, I'm tired of folks. Well, I, mean, I hate the table when you sign up for this. You sign up to be used. Talk to me, somebody. No, no, that's why I say, but if, you, if you're going to follow me now, first deny yourself. Get yourself out of the way. Because following me is not going to be about you. Your feelings will get hurt. You'll get lied on. You'll get talked about. He said, but if you're going to follow me, it can't no longer be about you. Master's distress. He gets on a boat. He tries to go away to find some place to rest. When the crowd heard this, they follow him on foot from that town. And, and, and when, when, uh, they say when he went, a, went ashore, he saw a large crowd. Everyone say he saw. He saw. Now, he, he going to get away from them. Yeah. But he looks up, and there they are, a large crowd. Yeah. Everyone say a large crowd. Large. See, don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters, by the crowd. Yeah. Some people, they can't really do ministry. Unless it's a crowd. Some preachers can't preach. Unless there's a crowd. You can't be, be, and I know a lot, I know many of them. Can't preach if it ain't a crowd. Can't, can't come to a certain uh, worship building. It's not enough people there. I, I need a crowd. Watch them. Some people demeanor changes when they're around a crowd. Preach how is Maxwell. Preach my, I gotta encourage myself. Crowds, Jesus, see, Jesus wasn't moved by the crowd. Matter of fact, he told the Pharisee, he said, look, he said, I don't even want to be a part of y'all crowd. I don't want to be a part of your clique. Jesus, you keep your little click because, and, and, and the crowd, and you got to know, the larger the crowd, I don't care how big the crowd is, there's a 28 rule. Here wants say 28. 80% doing the taking and 20% doing the giving. 80% lazy. 20% do the work. I don't care how big, if you got 5,000 or, 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 or 50, the, the, it's the same. 80, 20. Preach Maxwell. And so Jesus, see, Jesus not moved. The Bible says, and he saw. Everyone say he saw. Now that saw just don't mean to see with these optometrical eyes. He, he saw their heart. He saw their motives. Everybody in that crowd wasn't following Jesus for food. See, all of them there really was hungry. Many of them there really was, were, were, were seeking uh, 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 the, the, the love and compassion of the master. Because most of them knew that, that nature alone cannot satisfy your hunger. Nature alone cannot satisfy your hunger. You remember when he went to go meet the woman at the well? He goes, and the Bible says that he goes through Jericho. Now, he didn't go the all the way around to, so he wouldn't run into no Samaritan because Samaritans, uh, the Jews, would, would go all the way around so they wouldn't run into somebody, to the, to the Samaritans. Kind of like we do at church, you go all the way around so you won't have to speak to that person or shake that person's hand. See, these biblical characters weren't no different than, than us. So quit trying to make them some superlative saint. They were, they were just they were human and made out of the same human fabric as you and I. Talk to me, somebody. And so they, they, they in this crowd, and so they knew. So Jesus goes, hey, I have to go to Jericho because there, there's, there, there's a much need. Everyone said there's a much need. He said there's a much need that I go through Samaria and get to Jericho because there's one person. I need to meet. 
See, Jesus will go all the way and do a revival for one person. Jesus will go all the way. He went. Now look, y'all. He didn't take the short. I mean, he didn't take the long way. He took the short way. And there he is for one person. Everyone say one. I mean, one per. So, where do we get all about doing a demographic location before I go preach? Preach, Maxwell, stand tall. I, I, I got first before I come there. I got to do a, 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 a help me somebody. The uh, the checking for the uh, people in the city demographic. There you go. So they, 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 Jesus Jesus didn't do that. Everyone say he didn't do that. He said, I have to go there and what? For one person. And there he is, sitting on the well, waiting. The lady comes, get her water, and Jesus ministers to her. For one person. Not only that, he sits and waits. For one person. One. One. <laughs> then the disciple said, well, Jesus, we're going to go and get something to eat. You hungry? He said, no, because I got food. Yeah. He said, I, I got my food. Yeah. And, and so here he sees the crowd. Everyone say he sees the crowd. Yeah, yeah he, he sees he see the crowd, and he says, uh, so the disciple like, send him away. Yeah. Yeah. Send him away. Even the the disciple approached him and said, this place is, is deserted. It's already late. Everyone says already late. He says already late. <laughs> Send the crowd away so they can what? Go into the village. Go to, they can go to Kroger's food and get their own food. <laughs> Don't go by themselves. Let them use their own debit card. Send them away. Get rid of them. Isn't that what we do sometimes is just get rid of people? We don't want to meet their needs. We just want to get rid of them. Send them away. Get away from here. Do you got a dollar? You got this? You got that? Do you got some food? We always want to send them away. Everyone say, we want to send them away. Yeah, we want to send them away, but, but I like G because Jesus said, now, we ain't going to send them away. You buy them something. <laughs> you do it. The responsibility now falls on you. But here's the thing. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Let this sink in. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. He wanted to see what you was going to do. Because Christ, I, I want to see your attitude towards people that don't have as much as you have. What we do is, I ain't, I ain't giving my last $5. I'm not giving you my last 20 I'm not giving you my last loaf of bread. I'm not giving you my last jar of peanut butter. I'm, I'm not giving it away, but Christ said, no, you feed them. And they said, well, we, we, don't, we don't got much. Is that just an excuse? A lot of times we use that, don't we? I don't got much, you know. Well, one more, what about just sacrificing from yourself to give to someone? I knew y'all going to like this message. The Holy Spirit, I, it wasn't going to be a shout one. Because it's the Thanksgiving season. Now everybody is in this Thanksgiving season, but it's Thanksgiving every day for somebody that don't have nothing. So you already made preparation about your meals. But the guy that's homeless that don't have it, they have no idea what they're going to eat. But you'll sit down and you have, you are ready. I'm premeditated. How you gonna eat those greens? You already premeditated. How you gonna eat that peach cobbler? But Christ said, "Look, you do it." He's talking to his disciples. 
followers, learners, people that have been around Jesus. Isn't it funny that we hang around Jesus, we know the word, we know Jesus, but we don't act like him? <laughs> I mean, so you ever been around somebody and you hang around them long enough? You start acting like them. But you got to be careful, though, either it's positive influence or negative. And a lot of times, the negative is going to outweigh the positive. So if someone is always negative and a bad influence and you're around, sooner or later, you will picked up their spirit. You will picked it up. You want you to be loving and caring and kind. Now you just as bitter because the people you're around. That's why he says, good company. Bad company. They were bad more corrupt. But if you give other words, if you've been raised up right and you got good morals, you don't hang around nobody that what? Got bad morals. Your parents would tell you, they say, no, don't hang around that person. Because I know them. I know their parents. You've been raised better than to act like that. Talk to me, somebody. And you know, if you, your, your child, I mean, all of us here that have children, we wouldn't experience it. They get around the wrong person. Then they come home and they want to act like that person. And they don't understand that what you, you can't do that at my house. Let's tell my son, don't hang around this person. He wants, it seems like the, most, the, the one that's, that has the worst attitude, that's the one they want to hang around. Start acting like them. Dressing like, boy, you don't pull your pants up. <laughs> What's the word wrong with you? You know, because he's, he's around that, because the end. Now, here he is, raised in a Christian home, in church, singing the sun, being quiet, and all of that. But still, took on that bad influence. So Jesus said, look at here. He said, now as long as they've been around Jesus, they should have known the heart and the compassion of Jesus. Should have, saying, we should know. For us to read about him and to know him and to know his character and to know his personality, and we don't have the Bible that, and he was moved with compassion. How, how you going to not move like your daddy? Amen. Help me some. I'm getting, I'm getting confused. Yeah. In this Christian, this thing called the Christian community or the Christian right, I'm getting confused. Yeah. But Jesus, don't be confused because even the religious people of his day did the same thing. The Pharisees that, that should have known the better, known the law, they was the ones that was putting, they was doing, our, doing everything. Christ said, don't be confused. Because it's the ones that you think would know better. Does it? So Christ said, look, he said, and he, he said, no, you don't send them away, you feed them. Then he looked, y'all, he, he, he gives the disciples, he, he shares his responsibility with the disciples, then commanded the crowd, to sit on the grass. He said, sit down. Now Jesus wanted, he's, he, he wanted to make sure he has control. Because you know, you're talking about dealing with food. You don't want everybody standing up. I mean, seriously. You, I mean, if you're dealing with a crowd of people, now this is a large crowd. So he has to get the crowd in control. You don't want to just start feeding and folk right in there because they're going to grab more than what they're supposed to get. Preach They're going to take, they're going to do all kinds. He said, no, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> By them sitting, he has control. Yeah. And while they're sitting, it's something about sitting. You know, even my son, where? They didn't say, everybody go. We didn't knocking over tables and chairs to get back there to get the food. <laughs> they said, everyone stay seated. And they called per table. And what? It ran smoothly. You see, I mean, it was table two, table three, table this, table that. It was control. Jesus about having order and control. 
Paul said, well, Paul said, whatever we do, we need what? Do it in decent and in order. So Paul, he, so Jesus now goes, say, sit them down. He sits them down. They're sitting on the grass. Everyone said they're sitting on the grass. They're sitting on the grass. He tell, he, so he tells the disciples, he said, here, go and give them. Now, they already had like two fish, right? Two little fish. Everyone said two fish. Two little fish. Thomas says, hey, here's the fish. Little boy, little snack lunch. It's not much. But when you give it to Jesus, it becomes a lot. See, this is a lesson for somebody because you complain about your little. You, you sit there, oh, it's just little. It's just, and you won't even give your little to Jesus. When you got little, I mean little, give it, here it is, and it's not much. But here it is, Jesus. Because Jesus can take your little and multiply it. Either you believe it or you don't. He can take your little and multiply it. Two fish. Two little old sardine, or maybe there was some perch, I don't know. Two little old brims. And five loaves of bread is all he had. And counting five thousand, that's outside the children, the women and the children. It could have been 10,000, 9,000, we don't know. But it's a miracle that Jesus performs. See, Jesus, because you really, see, we don't look for miracles because you really don't need them. See, in America, we don't know, really know what a miracle is. Because Maury Watson put it this way, a miracle. Jesus at his best when he's needed the most. So you really don't need him. Let this sink in. You really, you really don't need him. I go to a doctor, I got good insurance. Doctor going to write me a prescription. But it ain't the medicine. Just healing you. God made the body. He, he made the organs. <laughs> it, it's, it's not that little pill you swallow. <laughs> the Lord tells the body what to do. He controls the body. He, he controls the heart, the lung. Don't you know there's, there's cells now in their fighting? The Lord says, I got some soldiers on the inside of you. And, and they're fighting, they fight out diseases. Keeping them away from you. Fighting them back because there's, there's, it's already poison inside of us. Talk to me, somebody. But, but with God, when he made, a, he, he made an organ, he made a system where it'll fight for us. Talk to me, somebody. That's why it's good to have what, a good immune system. <laughs> if it fights for you. And so Christ said, look, take it. I know it, it's not much, but here it is. Thomas said, look, Lord, here it is not much. But I give it to you, Lord. So you got to learn something to take your little. Give it to Jesus. Everyone say, take your little. Take your little and give it to Jesus. Don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Give it to him. I mean, it's a lesson here. This was a miracle. They, they needed, they got 5,000 people. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. So why you worry? Well, Christ already know what's going to happen. And you fretting? Worrying? Because I told you, see, God sees the heart. <laughs> That's what moves him. Do y'all hear me? That's, that's what moves the Lord because God sees your heart. Yeah. You, take, you take Cain and Abel. Everybody like, why well, we don't understand? They both brought a sacrifice. It wasn't the fact that, that, that Cain was the hunter and Abel brought the vegetables and all of that. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. Because they brought in the occupation in which they was working in. So that wasn't the case. The Lord knew whatever he was going to bring, it was going to come from vegetation because he's a farmer. 
He knew the other was going to bring me because he's a hunter. He knew that. But it's the attitude of the heart that he didn't like. And a lot of times the Lord rejects your offering because it's the attitude of the heart. That's why Paul said, I mean, really, if you, he said, don't give grudgingly or out of necessity. For God loves what? A cheerful giver. Them two dollars, you might well fold them back up and keep them. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Before say, well, God knows my heart. There's really some truth to that. If you, you better say, I, ain't, I, I didn't want to give it. Regardless of what the people say, the Lord is pleased. You say, your heart, I knew you wouldn't give one in your heart anyway. Can't the Spirit count that song, didn't it say uh, Harvey, why you go up and down the road neglecting your family? He said, it's in my heart to serve the Lord. He said, it's, it's my passion. And the Bible said, and Jesus was moved with compassion. That compassion is a com compound word. It means come means to come alongside and passion means to suffer with. So Christ got along. See, when Christ saw them, he saw a need. So we ain't sending them people away. We're not sending them away because Christ was moved with compassion. He, because all of them there wasn't following Jesus just for the food and just for the healing. But, 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 it's, but it's, it's tension on the text, though. You know what I say? It's tension on the text. Because now he goes and he feeds them, right? He turned to sit down. When the evening had came, the disciples approached him and said, this place is uh, into the villages. They'll go buy food for themselves. Verse 16, they don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. But we only have five loaves and two fish here, they said to him. Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the crowd to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish and did what? Looked up to heaven. He took the little he had and said, and started complaining. He said, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Come on Thanksgiving, someone, when we don't get this, be thankful. Yeah. Be grateful for what you have. Talk to me. I don't care if it's a can or pork and beans. Be grateful for the can of pork and beans. Yeah, yeah. You got to learn how to. It's nothing like ungrateful people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to bust your constitution. Ooh, come on. <laughs> so why say bust them? <laughs> because 5,000 people plus, not counting the women and children. But Matthew gives a hint in this thing. He says, food left over. <laughs> Y'all didn't listen. He said, food left over. Why was it left over? I wonder. Maybe somebody cries, oh, I don't eat fish. I'm allergic to fish. And oh, he got to offer some fish. I don't want no fish. <laughs> I don't want no bread. I don't want that bread. It ain't sweet enough. <laughs> I guarantee you some people in this crowd was ungrateful. That's why a lot of food was left over. Because everybody didn't want it. I'm allergic to it. I can't eat it. Like you, the mama, when mama told you to go eat, I ain't eating now. That ain't what I want. You mean tell me 5,000 people, everybody, oh, I just want fish. <laughs> it was some selfish, ungrateful people in that crowd. The one, the Lord said, those who want to eat, eat. You don't, this all you're getting. <laughs> oh, help me, somebody. Ungrateful. Nothing like trying to serve ungrateful people. We do that today to the Lord, don't we? 
We, 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 we're no different than these people back in the biblical day. We do the Lord the same way. We're no different. I don't want that. The Lord gave you something. You're complaining about it because you're looking at somebody else's. The Lord bless you with a car. Bless. He said, that's what I gave you. I'm grateful. So I just saying, Lord, I'm grateful for what you have given me. Lord, it, it, it's not my, I may not have what you have, but I am grateful. That moves the heart of God when you're grateful. Those who got children can understand, ain't nothing like giving your child something and they act like they ain't grateful. You bought something out of your hard-earned money, thinking to, to be the blessing to them, thinking put a smile on their face. They look and say, I don't want it. That's how we do the Lord. Ungrateful. Coming up on Thanksgiving, there's some people now that, that there's some homeless people saying they cannot eat. Don't know, they don't know how their next meal coming from. You ride past them every day downtown. You'll just stop and say, Lord, I'm grateful. Because let me help you. You're only one paycheck away from joining them. <laughs> I don't got no help here. One paycheck away, and you'll be down there under the bridge. Move over. <laughs> you got an extra blanket? <laughs> it's only by the grace of God. By his grace. Everyone says by his grace. It's by his grace that we have what we have. Grace is unmerited for getting what we don't deserve. And nobody in here deserve what we have. You don't deserve it. You do not, you and I do not deserve, we don't deserve the next breath. And I'm not trying to be morbid, but even for, for, for a parent or a parent to, to, to take a baby out and wait it certain months, and that baby comes out, and that baby only lives for one hour, that's more grace than that, ba that baby deserves. If he, that baby don't live but five minutes, that's more grace than he deserves. And you look how old you are. <laughs> it's by his grace. It's by his grace. Not that you deserve it. Not that you're, you're honoring of it. It's just simply by God's grace. Then he says, I'm going to get out of here. He said, they, so they sit down. He feeds them. He broke, the, he broke the bread. Then he gave it to his disciples. Then they gave it to the crowd. <laughs> you can see the pressure now because you're on the, on the disciples. I don't want that. <laughs> so we got, well, you got any fry? I want some baked. Is that how we do it? You go to the line, this is all they have. You got no, we don't got no bait. You don't got none bait. Some of these your kin folks in here. Talk to me, somebody. They, they, all they do, we're doing what the Lord told us to do. He said, give it to you. Maxwell, if they don't want to eat it, give it to them. So it don't matter if you eat it or not. Just give it. And, and, and it's not it's not depending on how it was cooked. He said, just give it to him. Then the Bible said, verse 20, everyone ate and was satisfied. <laughs> Every one of them that wanted to eat ate. Talk to me, somebody. But not only did they eat, but the Bible said, in Matthew, they were satisfied. Everyone say satisfied. satisfied. They were happy. They, they were grateful for what God has given them. Yeah, yeah. It might not have been what you wanted. But you got to learn how to be satisfied and be grateful. Yeah. And the Apostle Paul tells us, Paul had this down. Paul says, I learned in whatever state yeah. I'm in. Yeah. He said, whatever state I'm in, he said, I learned to be content. 
I learn how to abound in much, and I know how to abound in little. Yeah. What Paul is saying is, I learn how to be satisfied yeah. for what God has given me. Yeah. And I don't know about you saying, but I've learned how to be satisfied for what God has given Maxwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha! Yeah. I was talking to an individual, and we was talking, and this individual asked me a question. Kind of threw me off. So I want to ask you a question. It's all right. If you had a million dollars, what would you do? You know, this person may have it. Thought they were going to give it to me or something. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? I said, well, really, I said, I don't know. I said, first thing I would do, I would, I would, I would, I would get a, I would do something for the homeless. Yeah. Shower truck or something. Just yeah. do something. I said, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want big cars and houses. Wouldn't want none of that. I said, because the point I got now, where I'm going, the money won't do me no good. Right. Talk to me, somebody. See, I, I got content now. Right. Talk to me, somebody. I mean, really, I mean, I'm thinking like, but I go buy this, buy this, buy that. I'm thinking like, well, what would I really do with it? Really, I was like, I don't want it. Because I'm satisfied with Jesus alone. Talk to me, somebody. That's the God know my heart. I'm already satisfied. I said, Lord, I may not have the biggest house, but I got a house. Lord, I may not have the biggest car, but I got a car. Talk to me, somebody. Lord, I may not have the finest clothes, but I got clothes on my back. Yeah. I've learned how to be satisfied. Yeah. I don't got too old now yeah. to worry about a million dollars. I'm, to, I'm really, I, I, I've got to a point now, a million dollars would do me no good. Not for me. But may I go help somebody else? May I go build a shelter for the homeless or something like that, but a million dollars for me now wouldn't do me no good. It wouldn't make me do cartwheels and flips and turns because I'm satisfied in Jesus because Jesus can give me what money can't buy because I got enough sense to know that when come money, come problems. There's going to be some sleepless nights. I said, have all of that, but money can't, money can't, see, money don't, don't uh, solve all of your issues. A lot of y'all think, if I get the money, it's it solved. No, it's not just the beginning of sorrow. Because you first got to be content with what you already have. I've learned to be grateful. Touch your things and neighbor. You got to learn how to be grateful. Touch me and say, neighbor, be grateful. Give God a hand praise. Amen. Let's stand. Door of the church is open. Amen. You may come by letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what the Lord has already done. Like the old folks, now take your silver, take your gold. Just give me Jesus. It's enough. It suffice. I don't know where you are on your Christian walk, but you can find joy in Jesus. You can find happiness in Jesus. Take the big houses. Y'all live in well. But where are we going? You don't got to worry about a light bill. Where are we going? You don't have to worry about moth and rust. He said, thieves are robbing. None of those people, those things take places. Those are churches so.